Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to The Daily Bread. We are on day two, January 2nd, studying through the Holy Spirit in the New Testament as presented to us in the liturgical calendar, the daily readings. Today's daily reading from the New Testament comes from 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 through 28. And it reads as follows. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise which He Himself made to us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. As for you, the anointing which you received from Him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as His anointing teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in him. Now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. And the key verse that I'm highlighting for this particular daily bread is verse 25. Verse 25 reads, This is the promise which he himself made to us eternal life. And what an incredible statement that is in verse 25 of the second chapter of 1 John. Think about this. The Bible consists of 60 plus books written by 30 plus different authors over hundreds of years. The Bible is over a thousand pages, depending on what translation or how large the print is. And this one verse right here, verse 25, where it says, this is the promise which he, he himself made to us, eternal life. This one verse sums up the whole point of the Bible in just a few words. Eternal life. This is the promise of God. If you've ever wondered what the whole Christian theme is all about, I mean, even as a believer, sometimes you can lose focus and get caught up more in how often you're going to church or how disciplined you're being in your prayer life or how much Bible are you reading. And sometimes we can forget that the whole purpose of being a Christian is this thing called eternal life. And, and eternal life is great news. The most famous verse in the Bible that's known by even folks who aren't Christians comes from John 3.16. So if you're reading 1 John, you realize that when he says, this is the promise which he himself made to us, eternal life, John was actually quoting himself from his previous writing in the Gospel of John, in which he quotes Jesus, who said, he who believes in me will ne never perish, but have eternal life. And this is the good news, the gospel. He who believes in me will never perish, but have eternal life. Those were the words of Jesus. And I'll tell you what, I've heard thousands of teachings over the years on various topics from Scripture. But this message right here has got to be my absolute favorite. God has promised us eternal life. And if you listen to the Daily Bread teaching from yesterday, we talked about what eternal life actually is. The Gospel of John tells us in chapter 17 and verse 3, Jesus says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In other words, eternal life is literally a relationship with God, a relationship that begins here in this lifetime and extends on forever into eternity, even after we we die. It goes on forever and ever. A never-ending relationship with God who is love. In fact, Jesus said, And lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. He said, I will never leave you 
nor forsake you. He said, he who believes in me will never perish, but have eternal life. And eternal life is a relationship with him. And, you know, the great thing about God is that he cannot lie. And this relationship that he has with us, this eternal life, this eternal relationship with God, it's a covenant. It's based on covenant, not just goodwill. So in other words, God has sworn on an oath to us that by the blood of his own son, he will sustain us, protect us, love us, provide for us. He'll keep us in his love from now through all eternity. In fact, Jesus said in the gospel of John chapter 10, verse 28 through 30, he said, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. So Jesus is saying there that we are in Jesus's hand and Jesus is in the father hand. And that makes those of us who are sons and daughters of God doubly protected. And Jesus says, nobody can snatch us out of his hands or the father's hands. This is the promise, eternal life, a relationship with God forever, where he's our protector, he's our guardian, he's our provider. It's a great deal. It's the best deal going. And the thing is, not only does God provide us with earthly goods, but he also provides us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, wisdom. What a promise we have. This is the promise he made to us, eternal life. What a great deal we have as Christians. But I do have a question for you. If God's promise to you and to I, if, if it is eternal life, and Jesus says that this is eternal life, that you may know God, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. If eternal life is a relationship, how intimate of a relationship is God promising us? Like, I don't know about you, but I've got tons of relationships in my life and they're all very different from one another. Varying levels of intimacy, varying levels of purpose. Some people are acquaintances, others are close friends. I've got a wife. So like what kind of relationship is this eternal, eternal life relationship that God promises us? I believe that the answer is that it's actually up to us. It's actually up to you. If you're sitting there on your laptop or your cell phone or wherever you're at, the type of eternal life relationship that you have with God is really up to you. God is willing to be as intimate with you as you are willing to be intimate with him. As much time as you're willing to give God, he's willing to give that to you as well. As much as you seek him, you will find him. As often as you knock, he will open the door. As often as you ask, you will receive. These were Jesus' words. Matthew chapter 7, he said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So this is the promise of God, eternal life. As much intimacy with Jesus as you want. I love the example given in the Old Testament where there is a lady who is poor. I believe she's a widow. And Isaiah the prophet, or Elijah the prophet, excuse me, meets with her and she's complaining that her and her son are going to die. And he says, no, you're not. Go and get jars and I will fill them up. God will fill them up with oil. And she went and she got a bunch of jars. And the word of the Lord says that as many jars as she got, they were all filled with oil. As much room as you will make for the Lord, he will make for you. So there's, there's degrees of experiencing eternal life. 
And, you know, when we view eternal life as a relationship and not just a future destination, it really changes things. I know sometimes people think that eternal life is a future place where they go to heaven when they die and spend time with God, but eternal life begins now. It's a relationship that starts now. And I don't know about you, but I want to experience as much eternal relationship with Jesus as I possibly can, even in this lifetime. I don't want to wait until I die to start getting to know him. And I mean, that's really the topic we covered in yesterday's Daily Bread. How exactly do we develop that relationship? It's a good question. Oftentimes when people think of developing a relationship with Jesus, they say, well, how do I develop a relationship with somebody who I can't see? I mean, my neighbor, I can go next door, I can knock on the door, I can spend time with them, I can get to know them. But how do we develop a relationship with Jesus who is now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven? We don't see him. He's not walking around on the earth as a Jewish rabbi or a Jewish carpenter. So how do we interact with him? How do we engage with this eternal life? If his promise to us is an eternal relationship that begins now, but he's not walking the earth anymore. He's actually seated in heaven with the Father. How do we interact with him? And that's where today's passage addresses this. Yesterday's daily bread uh, teaching addressed it as well. Uh, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 from today's reading, it says, As for you, the anointing which you received from him abides in you. And is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you abide in him. You see, it's the anointing. It's, it's the Holy Spirit who teaches us all things and through, through whom we have access to Jesus and the Father. And this is taught all throughout the entire New Testament. In fact, Jesus himself said in John chapter 14 and verse 16, he said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. For he abides with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. Peter said, repent. And in the book of Acts, Peter said, repent and be baptized, and you will receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Just as Ezekiel promised, or the Lord promised through the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and 27. He said, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. That's the, the picture of baptism. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and bring it about so that you walk in my statutes and are careful to follow my ordinances. So the way that we enter into this relationship with this invisible Jesus, who's now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who's been deposited on the inside of us to help us walk in God's ways. In fact, Jesus said, He who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my father and he will reveal himself to them. So Jesus speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. And then as we get to know Jesus and we learn to obey him, the father then reveals more and more to us. The, the relationship expands, so to speak. But the key here that I'm focusing on is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who reveals Jesus' words to us. It's the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is the helper who we interact with and through who, uh, who we get to know both Jesus and the Father. So come, Holy Spirit. Come and fill the hearts of the faithful with the intimate knowledge of Christ. Start right now. Start today. I lift up the person listening to this daily bread. I ask Holy Spirit that you would invade their car, their living room, their couch, their headphones, wherever they're at listening to this. 
Holy Spirit, that your peace, your presence, your wisdom, your revelation would reveal to them Jesus' love. I want to end today's Daily Bread with a prayer from St. Paul in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I hope you enjoy today's daily bread. God willing, we'll be with you again tomorrow.